All right, so in this video, I have a month follow-up after wearing the Nike Cruiser 1 for a month, and I wanted to give you guys my pros and cons and my overall thoughts on this new Nike model. What is going on, guys? Hess here, CollectiveKicks.com. If you guys would like to shop this week's top sneaker deals, check the link in the description. As always, and happy shopping. If you guys want to buy a pair of these, I will link them in the description as well. They are easily available. I've seen them on sale as low as 120 as of right now, but because they're not really moving, I picture these going down quite a bit, and I think it's going to be a really good bargain for those that are actually looking for a really comfortable pair of sneakers. Before we get too deep in the video, though, I am going to clean these up. They're uh, a little bit dirty here. Most of the time when I wear a lot of my sneakers like this outside, I just keep them in my garage. Uh, because they don't really fit in the sneaker room after I wear them in the mud. But I wore these things out and about for a holiday event, checking out some Christmas lights and stuff like that. So it was definitely a little bit dirty out there. So If you guys want to save 10% at rejuvenator.com, you guys can do so with the link in the description. Hesskicks10 is the code. But if you guys use my link in the description, it will actually take you to their website. And then once you get ready to check out, in cart, my code will already be applied. My favorite product on the site, as I mentioned many times, is the three brush laundry system. Can't go wrong with it because you have three different brushes for all different types of materials. Then you also have the laundry system, which is like exclusive to Rejuvenator. It's like the thing that they own the patent on, which makes them different than any other sneaker cleaning company on the market. All right, so here's a look at the cleaned up version. Definitely much, much better than the previous. I mean, look at the bottom. Even all of the, the little dirt inside the pods are pretty much all gone. Clean up really nicely, um, which is actually something I'll mention is really, really easy to clean. The only thing is the bunching around the sock thing was not the most easy to clean. But here is a... Uh, comparison side by side of the cleaning. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into some of the pros and cons of the Nike Cruiser 1. We'll start off with the pros as usual, and the first things first is the Mastiff React butt. Like, look at this thing. It's so ridiculously big. It's the biggest dunk I've seen all year long on a pair of Nikes. Super, super comfortable. Uh, which is the next pro. It's amazingly comfortable. Like I threw these on and I was like, whoa, what is going on here? It was like the Epic Reacts more chill, relaxed, super fun cousin. Like because it wasn't really snug on your foot. It was a little fuzzy wuzzy on the upper, but the, the React was just insane. They're definitely really lightweight too, which is another pro. Uh, the fact that these don't weigh a ton, even though they have massive React stacks, which is pretty awesome. I mean, this stuff is no joke. It's super, super thick. So the next pro is that these are kind of like the Nike React Prestos, but they have a little bit more structure, which I found refreshing because the React Prestos were really, really good on feet. But even for myself, they were a little bit loose in the toe box section. And this material on the upper on here, this mesh material, is a little bit more um, restricted than the loose material on the React Prestos. So um, something worth noting, it's like the React Presto, but even better in my opinion. Also, I really like the Tinker Hatfield colorway. This one specifically is really, really nice. Tinker Hatfield designed the shoes, which if you didn't know, he designed like the Air Max 1, Air Jordan 3, 4, 5, blah, blah, blah. I mean, he's done a bunch of different things. Tinker Hatfield's like the legendary goat, but he designed these with Phil Knight in mind, which is also another cool little nod to Nike. He's the uh, old CEO of Nike, and uh, he is wants to cruise. He doesn't want to run like a professional racer. This is the shoe for him. The next pro is just a personal one for me is I like the odd style. I know most people don't really like the overall look and style of the shoe, but the funny thing is the more that I wore these, they were like head turners everywhere I went. Grocery stores, like, like at work in the elevator, people were like, whoa, those are awesome. And they really liked this colorway because it was so crazy and bright. And they wanted to just know more about the shoe. So I actually found out of the last like three or four months, this shoe was the most talked about shoe from random people that I didn't know uh, just because I was wearing them. So I thought that was kind of cool as well. And as I already mentioned, but the next pro would be that these are not made for elite athletes. Nike's always gearing their basketball and running and basically all facets of the stuff that they make to the elite athletes in every single field. But this one's not for an elite athlete. This is for regular Joes wanting to get out there and start running and have like impact protection on their knees 
and stuff like that. I think it's a really smart market, the old geriatric folks out there. And, uh, you know, maybe overweight people too or whatever it might be. I like myself a little bit. I'm cushioned for the pushing on my end. But these things are just really comfortable because of that, which I really, really like that they geared something more towards beginner athletes and designed really, really well uh, instead of just a random like pair of sneakers or whatever. These things really feel great. I do like the low cut of these as well. They fit really good with no-show socks. And honestly, you could wear these with no socks as well because of that fuzzy uh, liner in them. Uh, Phil Knight doesn't like to wear socks when he runs, which is the reason why I think why they did that. It's kind of like a sock liner, like literally like a fuzzy sock um, sweatband sort of thing. But um, some people are going to like it. I mean, I like the fact that I don't have to wear shoes in them if I don't want. I can always clean them up with my rejuvenator, especially with the laundry system. These ones are going to be a prime candidate for that to get that really deep clean on the inside of the shoe. And finally, the mesh on the upper is really, really breathable. And I really like the mesh that they provide on the shoe. Um, all in all, it just feels really, really good on feet. Those are the pros. Let's go ahead and get into some of the cons though. One is the sock liner. I know it's a pro because it's comfortable and all that other stuff, but it also does get really warm because it is really fuzzy. This in the summertime would just probably not be my go-to shoe because of that liner, just so thick and so warm. It's noticeably warm on feet, so I will throw that out there. Also the look of it, I really don't like the fuzzy look. I want to shave the thing down. Um, I just... It's not too noticeable, so I don't mind it too much, but um, but it's definitely noticeable on feet because it adds extra warmth. And as you can see, like right here, the little fuzzy streams like come undone and stuff. So, I mean, that's not really a good look. I wouldn't mind uh, just shaving those things off. Don't really like that. Next con is just the overall style with the orbs everywhere. Like some people aren't going to be feeling all the little weird like dots everywhere all over the shoe. This one is one where it stands out the most because obviously the contrasting black and white. There are other colorways such as the cream one that I have that are not as abrasive. It's just more like the orbs like blend in with other colorways. But um, I actually don't mind the design element, but I'm putting it as a con because I think that there are a lot of people that have mentioned that they don't like the look of the orbs. Next con would be the overall fit. Might be a little too loose for some people. I personally like it. It's not as loose as the Presto Reacts, but it still is loose. But for those people that don't really like a loose feeling sneaker in this section of your shoe, then this might not be for you guys. I just wanted to throw that out there. Compared to like the Epic Flyknit Reacts, like that's super snug in this section for me. But the stretchable material is like pulled really tight. This is like really loose fitting material. But I like it again. Some people might not. Next con would be the fact that there's no tongue. I always say that every time it's there. Uh, it is nice and easy to get on your feet though, so it's not that bad, and it does look like a mock tongue because you do have cage that comes up around the, the sides of the, the shoe here, but it's not bad. It's just I like to have like a real tongue personally. Probably not even worth noting as a con. Most people aren't even going to be bothered, and again, at least it looks like it has a tongue. And lastly, the cost is a little bit high at $150. I already saw them on sale for $120 when I saw them at that price range, so that is actually a better price obviously than $150, but $150 is a little bit high for this shoe. Personally, I think it's worth every penny of 150 though. It's really comfortable, as I mentioned, and it's one of those shoes that as soon as you get them and you try them on, people are going to be surprised, and they're going to be pleasantly surprised uh, when they get them on feet. So to round up my thoughts on the shoe, is it worth buying? It's worth buying for 150 but at 120 it's a bargain because it's a really great shoe what you get. It's a top five comfort sneaker for me for the year. If you guys didn't see my top 10 comfortable sneakers video, um, I will be having that. I'm not sure which one's going to make it out first. But, I mean, this one's in the top five already. I mean, it's just one of those shoes that I really, really like. For my feet, uh, this one is definitely a pair that I, I really dig. I have, like, a flat foot, though, so I'm going to throw that out also. I mean, for people that have a high arc, maybe this isn't a shoe that you like. But leave a comment in the comment section for those people that have tried the shoes. Let other people know what you guys think about them. Is it something that you guys really like or not? What did I get right and what did I get wrong? Uh, this is just my personal opinion, so everybody's entitled to theirs, and everybody has different types of feet, so always worth leaving the comment if you think it because other people might have some value in it. Um, even myself, I'm all some value in it because, you know, maybe I didn't think of something that you guys are thinking of, but that's the video. That is the Nike Cruiser 1, and uh, this is a shoe that I really love. Nice work, Tinker Hatfield and Nike. Um, I was really happy to get this shoe. It was a shoe that I didn't know that I needed, um, and now that I have it, I definitely like really, really like the shoe. Hopefully we'll have a lighter weight summer version without this thick uh, liner on it, but I'm hoping to see more colorways and more uh, with this midsole in the future. But thank you guys for stopping by and watching. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel and hit that notification bell to be notified of when my videos go live. Have a great rest of the day. Peace guys.